All right, so I'm gonna show how to open up and disassemble this uh, ThinkPad T480S, um, a Lenovo mo uh, laptop. So first what you wanna do, all right, undo all the screws from the bottom. So to do this, you'll want to use a PH1 or a J1 screwdriver, and then just undo the screws. All right, um, the screws actually stay in the panel, so you don't have to worry about removing them completely. Just undo them until you hear it like click that means it's coming out of the the little screw hole okay so just undo all the screws just like that all right once you get all the screws out um, go from the back and then pull this up Let's see here it might get stuck so you have to kind of pry Let's see here, why is it stuck so strong? Might have to go from the side, start from the side. Okay, so let's see here. Oh. This side. Okay, this side works. All right, so get underneath, pull up the case. All right, so here you'll see it's like popping up kind of. Right. If it's stuck, you might have to check the screw scan. There we go. Alright, and then just keep pulling it, just like that. Alright, once you get all the clips out, then the cover will come up like this. And then just keep lifting it, and then the bottom part will release itself. Okay, so just like that. That's how you remove the cover. All right, since I'm working on the screen, I'm gonna to wanna to remove the battery first. So remove the screws. Looks like there's four screws holding it. So there's one, two, three. Alright, once you remove those screws, you should be able to lift the battery connector up. So just I use this screw hole and then lift it up. Be careful not to, um, if you're prying this up, not to put pressure on the SSD because you could damage it. Um, the battery model here is L17M3P71. So if you need that, that's the battery model number. Okay. Set the battery aside. I'm going to hold the power button just to drain any power from the board so it doesn't cause any damage when I remove the screen. All right, looks like their keyboard key is popping out. Hmm. I'll see if I can fix that too later. All right, so usually hold the power button about 15 seconds should be good. All right, the RAM, lift up this, put pull these two tabs to the side out, yeah, and then they will pop out. So this RAM is PC42666V, so this is DDR4 RAM, 8 gigs, alright. So I don't really need to take all this stuff out because I'm just doing a screen replacement, but I'll show you what's inside the computer. So you got this one USB port, um, this is a USB 3 port, and it's replaceable, so if something happens to this, this board's replaceable with these um, this connector, you can remove them you just flip up these little black plastic tabs and then you can pull the cable out and then put it back and then pull the tab back down all right then you got the cable here for i believe that's the fingerprint yeah for the fingerprint sensor you got the one here for there's i don't know what that's for there's nothing there so i don't know what this is for like an nfc or something i don't know it doesn't really say then you got the trackpad cable here you got the cable here for the SD card slot. Um, let's see. That's interesting. I don't see a keyboard connector. So I believe you have to lift the keyboard out and then the connector is under there. Let's see. Oh yeah, this keyboard comes out separately. I'm not going to pop it out though. Hmm. I'm not seeing a trick to removing this keyboard, so I'm not sure how it's held in place. Um, it might be held in place with screws under here. Um, anyways, I'm not going to pop that out. If I, if you have any questions on how to do it, I can probably look up the part. And then from whatever I find for the part itself, then you can kind of tell how, how it's built. Anyways, um, you got the CMOS battery here. You got the connector here for the speaker. And that other cable goes all the way to this speaker. So this is for both speakers. 
Um, you got the um, uh, Ethernet port. Um, there's some screws holding this cover on, I believe. And then you got um, this board going across for the rest. You can't really take any of these components apart. Um, they're part of the logic board. Um, and then you got this. I believe this is for um, like a cellular network mobile internet connection. You got the screen cable. One's for the touch screen and one's for the LCD itself, I believe. If not, um, one might just be for the camera and stuff. Um, sometimes they integrate the touch screen cable with all the touch screen and everything. So this is most likely the touch screen um, LCD. And then this is probably just the webcam and the microphones. Um, then you got a connector up here. Is that for like the power button, I think? Yeah, so I believe that board underneath is for the power button. Um, the CPU is soldered in place. You got the wireless card here. To remove this, you just remove the one screw. It'll pop up like the RAM and then you can pull it out. The antennas to remove them, you just go from the tail and then pry it up. Um, I got a lot of videos on every computer that I do that, so if you can't figure it out, just watch those videos. Don't try and pry the antenna from the front of the connector here. You always want to lift it from the tail. Okay, um, and then you got the fan connector here. It looks like the fan, to remove it, you'd have to take the heat sink off or take the whole motherboard out. Okay, then you got the hinge screws here if you want to release or remove the whole um, LCD. And then you got an M.2 SSD. Um, this looks like a PCIe NVMe SSD, but they didn't label it. Sometimes they're, oh yeah, it is PCIe. So this is PCIe NVMe SSD. Um, so if you wanted to put a larger one, you can. Um, all right, and looks like that's all there is to this model that's inside. Um, so one stick of RAM, and then you got the um, the M.2 SSD. Um, but yeah, hopefully this video helped if you were trying to upgrade something. If you're trying to do a repair, um, I don't want to mess with this computer since the only thing wrong with it is the screen. Um, oh, that's one thing I can show. I'll show the screen. Okay, so the screen part, um, let me see. Uh, this keyboard thing, they broke it. Otherwise, I would have able to fix it so let's see I'll try and put this keyboard key back on even though it's broken but we'll see if it's doable at all all right so the keyboard keys the way they hold in place um, there's always this one like half uh, bracket and then there's this other one that's like kind of like a I don't know what you would call it so a claw or something where it's kind of just gripping I'll see if I can show you what it looks like when I get this out so if you're worried about like keyboard keys and stuff like that, um, so there's always this design where this side goes in like this, and then this one has little um, claws like this that basically just grab the connector when you like slot it in. Okay, so that's that. And usually for the keyboard stuff, to put them back, you just slide this thing in place first. And then after that, you can pop this on. One of the plastic pieces are broken, so I don't know if it'll stay, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, it, it still kind of pops out. So that one, they need to replace the plastic piece. So it's fixable. They do sell those things online, but yeah, since they're not paying for that repair, I'm going to leave that there, and I don't have the keys. All right, so anyways, uh, for the screen, um, there is a strong adhesive underneath here. So I took this out um, a while ago already, so it's a little bit easier. But basically, um, don't do this unless your screen is already broken because there's a good chance that you'll actually damage the screen more. Um, so unless you already got a new screen that you're ready to replace it with, um, or if you need to get the model number and you can work on an external monitor, then you can go ahead and do this. But basically, you just pull up this outer frame and while you're pulling the adhesive away, I push this um, the outer edge of the frame in towards the computer, and that usually will release the clips. So here you can see I'm kind of pushing the, the whole frame in towards the screen while I'm pulling up the adhesive. So again, the adhesive is coming out pretty easily because I've already done this. Um, normally it will be like much more difficult to get this adhesive out. And there's a good chance you can damage the screen, so be careful if you're going to attempt this. Okay, there we go. And then we get to the bottom part of the screen. Um, 
hopefully you can see all this. Normally I would do this while the computer's sitting up, not like laying down like this, but I can't show it on the camera that way. So just peel it up just like this. All right. There we go. So peel this up. And there's also some strong adhesive down here that holds these screws. So here you can see that adhesive was holding there. Um, but that's how you remove the frame. Once you remove the frame, and again, if you're doing something with the screen, you want to make sure to, um, what do you call it, to disconnect the battery and then hold the power button a few seconds. All right. All right so remove those four screws. Alright, once you remove the four screws, just lean the computer back up and then pull the screen forward. So it just takes the LCD itself down. Be careful because the cable's a little bit short and also the adhesive kind of makes it a little difficult. Um, but once you do that, you got to peel up this um, adhesive here. So sometimes it helps to get a needle, slide it underneath and then get it between the two layers. Um, this adhesive is pretty strong, so here we go. Just be careful if you use metal tools that um, if you touch it on these pieces, sometimes you can cause damage. Um, so you always want to, again, drain the battery first and disconnect it. Okay, so now that we use the needle to lift part of it, I can get my fingernail underneath and I can peel this up. All right, so peel up the plastic tab. All right, wow, this adhesive is some weird stuff. It's like stretching the adhesive, but okay, there we go. And then underneath that, there's a little flip tab that you flip up. Just use your fingernail or pry tool. Once you flip that up, then you can pull the connector away. Um, the screen had adhesive on it, so now it's stuck to the laptop, but there we go. All right, so we'll set that screen aside. Get the replacement screen. Um, I forgot to show the model number, but here's the model number of the screen. Uh, if you need that, oops, R140NWF5. So, oops, sorry, there you go. So, if you need to replace the screen on yours, that's what it is. It's a touch screen. Um, so, yeah, they do have compa compatible models that basically will have different model numbers, but they'll be compatible. So, just make sure if you're getting one, it doesn't have to be the exact same model number, but make sure it'll work with your computer. Usually if you search the model number, then um, any listing they post will be a compatible model. Okay, so once you get that, then we gotta pull this and put this screen back on. The adhesive here makes it a little tough because you don't have much uh, slack to work with. Um, so just be careful. If anything, you might want to peel that away. So here I just peeled that piece out and now I have a little bit more slack to work with. All right, so this is a little tough because the tape is very, um, it's thick, so it wants to keep bending itself backwards. Okay, so just get the connector lined up. All right, and then once you get it lined up, pull the connector in. Make sure you have it aligned. I've seen some people, um, they have it like slightly too high and then they end up bending the little slot and then they damage it. So be careful, make sure it's all lined up before you pull, before you pull the connector in. Okay, so there we go. Got the LCD in. Now we'll just put the thing back up and then put back in the four screws. All right, just like this. All right, then take the four screws, put them back in. Okay. Just like this. All right, now that we've got the four screws in, we will connect it and make sure it turns on before putting the bezel on because sometimes the screens will be sent and then they get damaged in shipping or maybe um, they ship a bad screen. All right, so put the battery back in. 
start at an angle like this, make sure the screws line up, and then set it down, and then push that in place. All right, I'll put this one screw just so that the screw stays connected. All right, after we got that, then we'll just flip it back over, and hopefully it's charged. Push the power button, it's turning on. There you go, you can see the Lenovo screen. So that's good to go. Now we just gotta put the frame back in. So the frame sometimes can be a little tricky. Let me make sure it turns on and then I'm gonna turn it off. Okay. Interesting, okay. So once you get the frame, I'll have to lay it this way so you can see. Um, the difficult part is getting this bottom piece in actually. So make sure when you put that, that you kind of slide it and then you'll want to actually check. Um, you'll want to close the screen, um, the screen slightly and then check and make sure it's actually lined up. So I'll put, push this piece in first. All right. And then line that up, snap those in place. Snap that. Clips can be a little tricky sometimes. But snap those in place. Alright. Snap that in place. Close the screen slightly and then you can check see so if you look here um, it actually didn't go in right so you have to take it out so here you can see where these little clips are um, if you can you can try and push it forward and then slot it back in but sometimes it doesn't move if that's the case then you gotta pull it back up so it's kind of tough while I'm having it laying like down like this so I'm probably gonna have to lift it up to do this so you probably won't be able to see clearly what I'm doing, but basically have the screen, oh, okay, you can kind of see, have it like that, so that way you can kind of guide it down. All right, and you can kind of guide it down like that, and then you can put these clips in. So now we've got that, and then I will check. So this, um, the corners are a little bit tricky too because they have to slot down. So to do that, I pull this part forward and then I push this in. So it kind of bows it, um, bows it outwards and then it helps it go into the slot. All right. So now that I got that, I'm going to check the connection again on the back. So now you can see there's no tab sticking out here. So that means you did it properly. Okay. So get that all these little clips back in all right so it helps to push the frame towards um, the screen like towards the center like the same way you remove them that helps the clips go in easier so just do that and should be good to go all right and then make sure to push it down around the edges just so the adhesive can stick down all right and then after that turn it on one more time make sure it's good to go all right, looks good. So now we'll put all the screws back in. If you're doing this like me, um, just be careful because now that I turned it on and power's running through it, again, you don't wanna drop anything metal on the thing uh, while it has power or you can cause damage. If you drain the power, it's usually okay. But um, yeah, be extra careful if there's power running into the laptop, not to drop any metal objects inside, okay? Or anything conductive. Okay, so a lot of people think that liquid um, damages computers, so it's not actually the liquid that damages the computers, it's um, the fact that when it's wet, it's basically like um, something conductive allows electricity to flow anywhere, um, so that's what damages the computers actually. So I'm going to clean this up, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, with this um, panel, you want to put the, the bottom edge in first, not the hinge area and then you just lay it down and then put the screws in, okay? 
So that's all there is to this computer. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help me. And thank you for watching. Bye.